All right, if you have a Bible, I'll go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter number 6. So I told our Sam we're going to preach a message on prayer, but we never discussed what topic we're going to preach on. So, uh, so, so it's going to be fun to get in the subject of prayer from two different angles. Now, while we are turning to Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And then Jesus told them the famous Lord's Prayer. So the title of the sermon this afternoon is called Lessons from the Lord's Prayer. Now the word pray simply means to ask. That's what the Bible says, I pray thee, I beseech thee, I earnestly contend thee. Okay. Now the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, look at verse number 7. Matthew 6, verse number 7, the Bible says, but when he pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So the Lord's Prayer is not meant to be repeated or chanted, but we can use that as a principle to learn the lessons from prayer. And Bible says when he pray, so God expects us to pray and fast. Bible does not say if we pray or fast. Look at verse number 9, Bible says, after this manner, therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven, hallowed, be thy name. So we should follow the manner, follow the pattern of the Lord's Prayer. So point number one, we should pray to God as He is our parent. The Bible says, After this manner, therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven. Because when you are praying to God, you are addressing to our Heavenly Father, right? And the Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and God will forgive our sins and hear our land. So we should approach to our God as our Father. Point number one, we should approach God as our parent. Point number two, we should approach God, we should pray as He is our praise. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9, the Bible says, um, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now the word hallow means to sanctify or to be holy. We should lift up His name when we are praying. You know, we should praise God for His substance, right? Thou should pray without ceasing everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We should lift His name up. You know, when we pray, we should not only approach God as our parent, we should approach God as our praise. We should thank God for every good thing that we receive. Point number three, we should approach God as our principality. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 10, the Bible says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we should pray according to the will of God. The Bible says we should seek first the kingdom of God. So if we are praying according to the will of God, God will answer you. Okay. Now here's, here's one of the promised prayers the Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. So that was if you pray for God to ask for wisdom, he's going to give it to you. Because that's among, that's within the will of God. Also, we should pray for laborers, right? Because that's what God wants. That's what the will of God is. King Solomon prayed for wisdom because he wants to serve God. And at the same time, God also granted him the riches, wealth, and honor. Because he, he seek first the kingdom of God. We should approach God as our principality. You know, I'm, I'm not against us having goals. In fact, we should pray to God that we should ask God what we want, but we should also pray according to the will of God. Now, we should have goals and plans in our life, but if God's will intervenes with your personal plan, we should be prepared to yield ourselves to God because His ways are always higher than our ways. Now, it's in James chapter 4, you lust, and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because he ask not. You ask and receive not, because he ask and miss, that you may consume upon your own lust. So there are two reasons when God don't answer a prayer. Reason number one, you don't even ask him. Reason number two, you are asking upon your own lust. But don't get me wrong, it's okay to desire third sort of things, but when God's will again intervenes with your plan, with your emotion, you know, with your personal will, we should yield ourselves to God every single time. Otherwise, God is going to struck you down very hard. And the other, and the other way to uh, have promised prayer is, the Bible says, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. So when you are praying to God, believe God has the power to answer a prayer. We should approach to God as He is our principality. 
Point number four, we should approach God as he is our provider. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 11, Give us this day our daily bread. Now, we as Americans, I'm not American, but we as Americans in general don't pray this prayer that often because we do live as uh, kings and queens, right? But in some countries, they do pray God every single day. Give us the food, give us the raiment, give us the daily sustenance for us to survive. So we should pray that God will be provide us. By the way, young man here, the Bible says in 1 Timothy that if a man provides not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he has neither faith and is worse than an infidel. So we as men should be able to provide for our family in the same way God himself, if you ask him, God, he's going to provide you. He's going to provide the food and the daily necessity, okay? The Bible says having them food and raiment, let's be there with content. We should not desire to have anything like a, like, like, a, like a whatever car you want to have, you know. I mean, it's not going to desire that, but we should learn to be content. You know, if you, know, if you have the food to eat, if you have the raiment to wear, just be content. You know, Paul said, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, deal with to be content. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 30, the Bible says, Remove far from my, from my vanity and lies, give me neither poverty nor riches. Bible is saying we should pray that God will neither give me poverty nor riches. Why? Because lest I be fool, lest I be too rich and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? And or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. So we should pray for neither poverty nor riches. We should provide that God will give us enough things to provide, to live our daily life. Point number five. We should approach God, we should pray to God as He is our partner. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So we should pray to God as He is our partner. We should mend our relationship with God by confessing our sins, right? The Bible says, For if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So we should approach to God as He is our partner. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says the reason God will not answer a prayer is if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So if we have some major sins in your, in, um, within yourself, we should confess to God so God can answer a prayer, so God can hear it. We should repair our relationship with God by approaching to Him as He is our partner. Last point, point number six, we should approach to God, we should pray to God as He is our protector. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we should pray that God will preserve us. God is going to keep us away from evil. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, And the very God of peace shall sanctify you holy, that you'll, I pray to God that your whole body, soul, and spirit be, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we should pray that God will give us a pure life. God will help us live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Not, not only uh, be pure physically, but pure emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. We should pray that God will preserve us from every false way. But I was thinking in Jude chapter 1, verse 24, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So, so in closing, we should pray to God as he is our parents. We should approach that because he is our heavenly father. We should pray to God as he is our praise, as he is our principality. Pray according to the will of God. We should pray to God as he is our provider, as he is our partner, as he is our protector. And if you don't know how to pray to God, just simply by asking God, Lord, teach us to pray, and He is going to tell you what you pray. Let me just close with, uh, with, with, with this last, last verse, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So the Bible says, God will answer you that's exceeding the ability we can ask. So the possibilities of prayer exceeds our ability to ask because God knows our heart. God knows what we want. So unto, us, unto Him that's able to be exceeding abundantly 
abundantly above all that we shall ask. So if you want something, simply by asking God. If you don't know how to pray, just simply pray to God. Lord, teach us to pray. Because God wants to give you what you want. God wants to answer a prayer. All you have to do is by asking. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thanks for this wonderful time, and thanks for Brother Sam uh, for delivering this wonderful message on prayer. I pray that you help us uh, follow the model of the Lord's Prayer, and help us to incorporate prayer in our daily life, so we can uh, beseech you and ask you, so we can uh, have transformation in our Christian life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.